Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Josh Widdicom! <laughs> not be shit now, eh? <laughs> uh, thank you for coming. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, genuinely. Um, but I'm more glad that you're here, because if you hadn't been, this would have been one of the shittest nights of my life. <laughs> it is lovely to be in London. I, I live in London. I've, I've just been uh, working in a place called Brazil. I don't know if you're aware of this. I'm not saying I was a big deal. I am a big deal in Brazil. I'm not saying that. I'll just tell you one story. You can judge for yourselves. I am... Um, I, uh, I was uh, getting some food in the Olympic Park, right, and I was, I was being served by a guy, and he was from Brazil. And uh, he looked at me, and I saw him smile, and I thought, here we fucking go. <laughs> and then he looked across at his mate who was working with him, and he called him over, and he pointed at me, and they were laughing and pointing at each other, going, oh, look. And they were talking, and they were going, Portuguese, Portuguese, but that's not what they were saying. <laughs> if he'd done that, the other one would have gone, sorry, are you having a breakdown? <laughs> No, but what I heard, right, he called his mate over, he went, oh, no, Portuguese, 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 Ed Sheeran, Portuguese, Portuguese. <laughs> I was really excited. I looked behind me, Ed Sheeran's here. Unbelievable. <laughs> he was nowhere to be seen. They've been having me on all along. <laughs> what's, what's your name, sir? Dan. Dan. How old are you, Dan? 21. 21, bloody hell. That's good. And what do you do for a living, Dan? I work in retail. You work in retail? It's a very fancy way of saying you work in a shop, isn't it, Dan? <laughs> Wait, so which shop do you work in, Dan? Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's. <laughs> Fucking hell, they've heard of it. <laughs> what, are you checkout or are you shelves? Both. Both? <laughs> a double threat? <laughs> <laughs> do you ever do trolleys? <laughs> no. Got to work up, haven't you? <laughs> Which do you prefer? Um, check out. Check out. <laughs> so, what's, what, how come you prefer check out to...? All you have to do is stand there. All you have to do is stand there. Because <laughs> <laughs> the shelves, fuck it now. <laughs> up, down, up and down. Have you got one of those little things you wheel around and stand on it? Don't need it. All right, big shot. <laughs> How tall are you? Six foot. Six foot? I was about to say, and you can reach the top shelf, but of course. It would be absolute idiocy of Sainsbury's to have a shelf which people of six foot couldn't reach. <laughs> I was going to buy beans, but they're on the super shelf. <laughs> can you send Peter Crouch to get me some beans? <laughs> Who are you here with, Dan? Here. Your friends. What, what are your names? Ryan. Brian. Brian. Joe. 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 Matt. Matt. Do you know each other from Sainsbury's? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Is this what works do? <laughs> Imagine if this is all of Sainsbury's. <laughs> Jay Sainsbury has gone, I'm going to treat my staff <laughs> to one night together at Hammersmith Apollo. <laughs> So do you all work together in Sainsbury's? No. Are you different stores? Yeah. Yeah. And do you two Sainsbury's? No. Yeah. I do that. You do that? Oh, yeah. God, I hope the fourth guy's Tesco. He's sitting there. <laughs> oh, the banter you get, eh? Every little helps, you fucking wanker. <laughs> it's good to be back in London. I've, li I've lived in London now for... T ten years, bloody hell. I originally, I lived in flat shares. I, I now live with my girlfriend. I don't, I don't like... Flat sharing, my final flat share. I lived with a man who um, couldn't handle being an adult, no good at it. To give you an idea, the moment I realised I had to move out, the moment it reached its peak was when I got a phone call from him one morning. I was out, he said, Josh, we've had a bit of an incident. I've managed to flood the landing. <laughs> and initially I thought, well, that's an interesting use of the word managed. 
Because that implies he's been trying to do it for fucking ages. <laughs> well, there's no taps. This is a lot more of a challenge than I thought. <laughs> Gonna have to run a hose pipe down from the bathroom. <laughs> this is what he said. He said, Josh, I've had a bit of an incident. I've managed to flood the landing. I said, how did you do it? These are his words. He said, what happened was I fell asleep in the shower. <laughs> covering the plug hole with my ass. isn't a thing. You can't just say that like that's a thing. I mean, that has never happened before. First, phone a plumber. Second, phone the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> so, well, didn't you wake up when you fell asleep and fell over? He said, oh, no, I was a bit tired halfway through, so I just had a bit of a lie down. <laughs> Sorry, how tiring is your showering technique? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, am I showering wrong? I've never got to the end of my face and gone, fucking hell, I'm knackered. <laughs> Can leave 40 wings before I move on to my balls. <laughs> but he's not got a big face. I'm not living with David Coulthard. <laughs> I mean, how did he do it? I mean, we've got that Radox relaxing shower gel, unless he's drinking it. <laughs> but it is, it's good to be back in London. I like it. We, we, do, we have had some eventful gigs. First night of the tour was eventful. Oxford, the first night of the tour was abandoned before the show had started. Good sign of what was to come. <laughs> uh, due to a power cut, right? It was, uh, the whole, the show was abandoned, right? We rearranged the date, everyone got free tickets there, and everyone got a free drink to thank them for their time, right? We was leaving, went past a member of the audience, he had a small red wine, he just turned to me and went, hey, Josh, look, free red wine. Best fucking night of my life. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. <laughs> the most dramatic, Buxton, Buxton, right? Five minutes in, someone got taken ill. We had to stop the show. He got taken to hospital in an ambulance, right? And uh, we stopped the show. I went off. Five minutes later, I came back on. He was fine, right? Came back on. Three minutes into my show, I was just talking normally. And then a guy came back across the front row with three pints. <laughs> As if he'd gone, oh, fuck, someone's having a heart attack. Probably got time to hit the bar, haven't I? <laughs> Going, don't mind me, don't mind me. Don't, oh, someone's left a body there, ignore that. <laughs> I, I, did the, uh, I did the Apollo a few years ago for my last DVD. I should fill you in if you're here on all of the developments in my life. There's been some big developments. My life has changed. I've got a, um, got a new debit card. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to brag, but I have one of the touchy-downy ones. You've got one of these, Dan? If you haven't, you haven't fucking lived, mate. Oh, my <laughs> God. Never do you feel so smug in your life, do you? Then when they go, how do you like to pay? Just fucking have, mate. See you later. <laughs> Where are we off to the future? <laughs> Why don't you give me a call when you get there, Captain Checkbook? <laughs> Thing is, you get used to it now, you can't go back. You go somewhere that doesn't have that technology, you can't believe your fucking ears. <laughs> it's just like to put in your pin number. Are you fucking kidding me? You expect me to stand here for four seconds, <laughs> pushing buttons. What is this, a Victorian workhouse? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, pret a no. I'll be getting my yoga bunny detox elsewhere from now on. <laughs> the worst is when you think they have the touchdown technology, but they haven't. You look like you've never used a debit card. <laughs> before in your fucking life. They go, how would you like to pay? You're just going... <laughs> so are you having a breakdown? <laughs> I hate it when they've got the terminal, they have to ask for your permission. Do you mind if I just... Yeah, I couldn't give a shit, mate. <laughs> just do it. You're currently slowing down the process of speeding this up. I trust him. What is he going to do? Go, do you mind if I just... £4,000? Unlucky, my friend. <laughs> Enjoy your Sprite. <laughs> it's only the one I had the other day. This was unbelievable. I was buying something online. I was filling the details. Right, the first question it said, does your debit card have a nickname? <laughs> no. <laughs> not as far as I know, no. <laughs> Maybe we're not as close as I thought. <laughs> I wasn't going, yeah, he fucking does. The Flexmeister General's in town. <laughs> Visa, more like fucking geezer, mate. 
tell you the other one I hate when you're in a restaurant and the waiter makes too much of not looking at your pin number. I hate that when he goes, if you just like to put in your pin number. <laughs> well, I wasn't suspicious of you until now. <laughs> it's like he's doing a magic trick. <laughs> just like to put in your pin number. Is it 4761? <laughs> I mean, that is my pen number, I'm a fucking idiot. Because I... <laughs> I struggle with technology. I find it undermines me, it does. Like my computer, I'm, I'm fine with it. most things, most devices. I'm fine with the red squiggly line underneath the word when you misspell something. I'm okay with that. Tell you what I'm not okay with. No suggestions. <laughs> when you click on the red squiggly line, it goes, no. <laughs> it might as well just go, are you a thick twat? Because <laughs> I know all of the words, and that is literally none of them. <laughs> Sorry, has a cat walked across your keyboard? <laughs> Are you Welsh? <laughs> that is not a word. Or hey, when your computer just makes decisions for you, when you decide to copy some text from an email into a Word document, your computer goes, oh, you're going to get that text. But I'm going to go rogue on font choice. <laughs> oh, you're going to get that text in size 48 pink Comic Sans. <laughs> I hope you can read Wingdings, because that's what you're going to get. <laughs> or if you just decide to bullet point and your computer goes, oh, you're going to be bullet pointing. Forever, my friend. <laughs> you're never going to be able to start a new line without a bullet point from now on. I hope you speak in facts. <laughs> Because everything in your life from now on is a list. <laughs> My letters will be ending bullet point, lots of love, bullet point, Josh. <laughs> I like the touchdown debit card. I like the chip debit card. I do. I've got the new chip passport. Not such a fan of that. No, they say it's good. You get the new chip passport. You get your own special queue. Then you get to the airport and it turns out Every fucker's got the new chip passport. <laughs> You're all queuing up while one old bloke goes, this is fucking brilliant. <laughs> I've got my own special queue. <laughs> I don't mind doing the passport photos. Some people don't like doing the passport photos. Some people enjoy it too much, don't they? You know the people, you know these couples you go around to the house? You can see they've got the passport photos taken together. Having a great time. I've never done that. Because I don't know about you, I've never been on a date to a post office. <laughs> I used to prefer it when it was four separate photos. You had to nail it every time. It's better, wasn't it? Though my dad, who is very tight, once took advantage of that when he needed a new passport for me, my older brother, and him. <laughs> You've never seen a man adjusting the height of a seat so fast in your life. <laughs> Spinning it around like he was fat boy slim going for a world record. Get in, get in, get out. I'm not Andy McNabb. We're not doing a job. <laughs> I was hoping someone found the photos went, fucking hell, he's aged quickly, hasn't he? <laughs> How long did this passport machine take? <laughs> I, um, I don't go on holiday with my parents anymore. I don't. Bragging, but I don't. I, um... <laughs> Instead, what happens is my parents will go on holiday um, without me and then bring me pointless souvenirs of their holiday that I don't want. <laughs> no one wants souvenirs of another person's holiday. They don't look, oh, I've got a Morocco key ring, why do I want that? So every time I get my keys out, I can go, oh yeah, I wasn't invited to Morocco. <laughs> I remember when I was a teenager, they came back with a t-shirt that said Paris. I had to wear this. Have you been to Paris? No. <laughs> i tell you who have, Tom and Sarah Widdicombe. <laughs> they had a fucking brilliant time. They brought me back last year a pyramid's snow globe. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but I remember my dad, he always used to buy this shit. He always buy it. I remember when we went on a family holiday to York when I was a kid, right? And he was buying all these pointless items in these gift shops. I said, why are you buying this stuff? And he said, well, you know, we should buy people some things to show them we've been to York. <laughs> and I said, I think they'll believe us. <laughs> I don't think they're going to ask for evidence when we get back. <laughs> We've just been to York. Bullshit, mate. 
Unless you've got a multicolored rubber with the word York on it, I'm not buying that tall story. <laughs> I mean, what is this, a holiday or an alibi? <laughs> they went to York recently. My dad brought me a York collectible teaspoon. Who is collecting a York collectible teaspoon? Oh, finally, I can combine my twin interests of English heritage and doing heroin. <laughs> oh, I haven't felt this high since I went to Hever Castle. <laughs> Pass me my Wookiee hole torn, OK, and we'll get on with taking all these drugs. <laughs> I tell you what I hate. When you go on holiday, people ask you to get them stuff. Have you had this? You go on holiday, they go, oh, are you going on holiday? Yeah, yeah. Could you get me a large bottle of vodka? No. <laughs> no, I couldn't, because I'm going on holiday, not doing a big shop. <laughs> no. <laughs> they always do it. Oh, yeah, could you do me a little favour? Yeah, could you get me 4,000 Lambert and Butler? No! <laughs> not a mule! I'll just go, are you right to put this cocaine in a condom and shove it up your ass? <laughs> they would give me this list of stuff, I've got it, I always say yes, and it's the final day, I'm always just running around a city looking for these items. It's like I'm on that episode of The Apprentice. <laughs> just running around in Milan going, I don't know what a pashmina is! <laughs> the worst, when I used to work in an office, that is the worst. You come back from holiday, people go, oh, did you get us anything? No. <laughs> because the reason I went on holiday is to forget that you fucking existed. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think about you once in two weeks and I loved it. <laughs> I don't think that there should be presents involved in offices. The other one I'd get rid of, Secret Santa, that is. Office secrets, I know that is a load of bullshit, isn't it? <laughs> Every Christmas they come down with a box of names, and what you've got to do, pick out a name, then you get them a present, maximum £10. Oh, thank God you told me. Because <laughs> I was going to get Jean from HR a hovercraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope I haven't overspent, Jean. You close your eyes, I'll just reverse your present into the marina. <laughs> What have you got me? A collectible teaspoon. Fucking brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I like Christmas, I do. There's certain things I don't like about it. I'd get rid of Christmas cards. It's, it's difficult as well in a, in a relationship when you're giving cards. I, I, it should be simple, shouldn't it? One of you should just write the card from both of you, fine. Instead, what happens is my girlfriend will get the card and then write, Dear Steve, write the message. Then write her name. Then write the word and and then hand me the card to write my name in a different handwriting so they know I took no part in the rest of the process. <laughs> shows it's from both of us. It shows it's from you. That's what it shows. <laughs> Why do I need to write my own name? I'm not four. <laughs> no, Josh, he can write his own name. <laughs> Why don't I just put a hand print and we'll be done with it? This was the worst. Last birthday, my aunt sent me a birthday card. Then my mum said to me, I had to send my aunt a thank you card for my birthday card. <laughs> she then sent me a thank you card for my thank you card <laughs> for her birthday card. I have been tricked into becoming my auntie's pen pal. <laughs> also, where are aunties getting their cards? Always from the same range, isn't it? Always something like the words birthday boy with a gentle watercolour of two footballers going in for a tackle. <laughs> I have never seen the, one of these cards on sale. They just bought a box load in the 70s. Well, that'll last me to death. <laughs> Are they on Moon Pig going, well, what I want, I want the words birthday boy. And then could I have a gentle watercolour of a racing car going past a chequered flag. <laughs> While I'm there, can I get one with a gentle watercolour of a golfer teeing off in tartan trousers? <laughs> oh, 
also, could you sellotape a pound coin on the inside as well? <laughs> Be the best 30th birthday you ever fucking had as well. <laughs> she bought me um, the worst present I've ever had last Christmas. Awful. I couldn't believe this, right? I was, she came, we were, I was with her for Christmas, right? Unwrapping presents, right? What I unwrapped from her was a flat cap. Oh, cheers, yeah, because it's my New Year's resolution to deliver bread on a bicycle. <laughs> I looked disappointed, right? She looked up and she said, oh, sorry, have you already got one? No! <laughs> I won't have one again once I reach the charity shop. <laughs> what am I going to do with a flat cap? I mean, like, when you get a bad T-shirt as a present, you could do things. You could wear it under something else. You can't do that with a flat cap. Walking around town, no-one spotted my flat cap underneath my top hat. <laughs> with a T-shirt, you can wear it to the gym. You can't do that with a flat cap. It's on the treadmill, a girl goes past, hey, up. <laughs> no, I haven't been to Paris, it's just a T-shirt. <laughs> she said, this is what she said, she said, oh, I thought it was fashionable. Then she added, perhaps you could wear it backwards. Backwards, I'm not Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> I do like Christmas, though. I do. I'm not complaining about it. I do, I do like it. There's certain things I like about it. Constant, constant nibbles. I love the nibbles. I love the chocolate, the chocolate assortments. Love that. Love the biscuits and cheese, the cracker selection box. Love the cracker selection box. Love all of the crackers, except one. You know the one I'm talking about. The one that shouldn't be there. <laughs> the digestive. <laughs> it's disguised itself, shaped as a loaf of hovis. <laughs> Sorry, who the fuck do you think you're kidding? <laughs> you're something that shouldn't be here, disguised as something that shouldn't be here. <laughs> I mean, what's happened? Is a digestive just a biscuit that is so shit? It's been relegated to being a cracker. <laughs> Rich Teagan, fucking hell, that could have been us. <laughs> we weren't so good at being dunks, we'd be down there as well. <laughs> I don't want a sugary biscuit with my cheese. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'd set this brie off beautifully, a Jaffa cake. <laughs> Are you a cheese guy, Dan? No, I don't like cheese. I, I like a cheese, I like a strong cheddar, Dan. On the cheddar scale, you know the one to five cheddar scale? You must know about this. Yeah, you crept up on me, I still don't really know what it is. I'm presuming it's cheesiness. <laughs> From five, cheesy, down to one, milk. <laughs> Who is eating a one? Man up, grow a pair, what is wrong with you? I think you need to specify, I tell saints, I think they should say what they, so you know what it is the equivalent on. So it says, it's strength from one, which is the equivalent of the blandest taste known to man, a rice cake. <laughs> Up to five, which is the strongest taste a human has ever experienced, a salt and vinegar disco. Too fucking strong, if anything, isn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Josh, now I've eaten a disco. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever feel the roof of my mouth again. <laughs> I prefer the cheddar scale to the other scales in the supermarket, the pointless ones. The one to three chilli scale on the microwavable curries. What is that? Oh, yeah, it gives the full range of strength of a microwave curry from one mild up to three miles. <laughs> Not the worst bit of the supermarket Indian range, is it? We all know that, the naan bread. That is an absolute farce, isn't it? I'm sorry, but that is not a naan bread. If they brought one of them out in a restaurant, sorry, is this a prank? <laughs> I asked for a naan bread and you've brought me out a piece of futon. <laughs> it's rigid, it's like a catcher's mitt. Chuck me an onion bargee, I'm going long. <laughs> Oh, and yes, I have tried putting droplets of water on it. It makes no fucking difference. <laughs> Here I am hunched over my tap with my supermarket naan bread, splashing away like I'm trying to keep a beached whale alive. <laughs> it's like I'm waterboarding it for information. <laughs> Tell me why poppadoms are so Moorish. <laughs> the 
water just rolls off. This is waterproof. I could sleep in it at Glastonbury. <laughs> How have I got a bit of food that is both wet and dry at the same time? <laughs> have you heard there's a hose pipe, man? Yeah, sorry, I was making a naan bread. <laughs> I like a naan bread in a restaurant, I do. Other breads I don't like in a restaurant, you know. That situation when they just bring you some bread. Have you had this? I went in a restaurant the other day, sat down, he came over, he said, here's our menu. And then he said, before you stop, do you want some bread? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. No, because I'm not a duck. <laughs> if I wanted some bread, I'd be down at the pond with my beak out, wouldn't I? <laughs> I mean, how little confidence have you got in your main menu? <laughs> There's the menu, I'd fill up on bread if I was you, mate, it's shit. <laughs> This is what he did, though. He came in, he said, do you want some bread? And then he said, do you want some water? Sorry, is this a restaurant or solitary confinement? <laughs> You're going to de-louse me? <laughs> he brought out the bread. I had to eat it out of politeness. It was very bland. I asked for Nutella, went down like a lead balloon. Right? <laughs> and then he came over. He, I thought he was going to take the order. He said, do you want some more bread? <laughs> Sorry, who's in your kitchen? Jesus. <laughs> He brought that out, right? I ate that. He came over so I could take your order. I said, no, I'm stuffed. <laughs> We're going for dinner. Greg's, I think. <laughs> I like naan bread, though. I do. I'm not one of those people that's pretentious about Indian food. You know, these people. I was on a stag do recently. Went for an Indian meal. Sat down next to a guy. Didn't know him. He'd just come back from travelling, right? And the food came out, and he put it down, and this is what he did. He went, um... Oh, sorry, I just... So used to being in India, I uh, almost started eating with my hands. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't realise I was sat next to a massive wanker. You almost started eating with your hands, I almost kicked you in the face with my foot. Kind of person that would drink real ale and act like that made him better than you. You know, these people getting around with them, I'll have a pint of lager. They go, oh, lager, really? <laughs> a commercial lager. I mean, wouldn't you prefer a pint of this? They brew it locally and they only make eight pints a month. <laughs> you know why that is, don't you? Because no one wants to fucking drink it, mate. <laughs> They're always going on about how much better it tastes. No one is drinking alcohol for the taste. Otherwise, you wouldn't keep drinking it. But I like the taste of milk. I tend to stop after one glass. <laughs> Find me at 2am, eight pints of milk down. <laughs> Go, fucking hell, there's got to be another dairy open somewhere, hasn't there? <laughs> All back tomorrow and I've got some UHT in the fridge. We'll party through till dawn. <laughs> They're like it makes them so much cooler than you. You're not cooler than me because you drink real ale. James Bond wouldn't be as cool if when he was in the casino, the woman came over. Get you another drink, 007? Yeah, just a pint of Otter's cock, please, yeah. <laughs> Do you want it shaken or stirred? No, flat and at room temperature. That's how I like it. <laughs> um, oh, i tell you what I forgot to mention. I, I didn't... I should have mentioned this at the start. I, did, I didn't know this when I started the tour, but my agent, uh, when I started the tour, put it on sale for a 16 and above. I didn't, I didn't know this. This wasn't my decision. I found this out uh, one of the first gigs of the tour when I asked a lad in the front row how old he was and uh, he had to correct himself. <laughs> I said, how old are you? And he went, 15, 16. <laughs> However, that wasn't the main thing that gave him away. The main thing that gave him away was everyone else was having a drink and he genuinely was eating a Freddo. <laughs> At least try and fit in. <laughs> Don't come via the tuck shop. I, I haven't got any issue with whatever age you are here tonight, it's fine. Uh, just as, a, as an amnesty, is there anyone here who is under 16? You, first row. What, what's your name? Phoebe. Phoebe. How old are you, Phoebe? 15. 15. Right, the trick worked. Get security. <laughs> rules are rules, Phoebe, on DVD night. I can't have you here. Get out. <laughs> so, so, 15, Phoebe. What, what year were you born, Phoebe? 2001. 
It's not gone down well, Phoebe, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, <laughs> your night's taken a turn for the worst. 2001! <laughs> Blimey, I mean, that means you don't even remember the year 2000. <laughs> I mean, that puts it in perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> so, 15... So, where, where, where did you grow up, Phoebe? Are oh, you growing up? Where, where? <laughs> what, you what? Wimbledon. Wimbledon. I, um... I, I grew up, um... I, I didn't grow up in um, Wimbledon, obviously. <laughs> I, um... I grew up in a place called Devon. Anyone here from... <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to talk to you about it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I did, I grew up there. No, nothing. Exciting happened there, Phoebe. I'd, I'd have killed to grow up near London. I, my nearest city, 25 miles to a place called Exeter. <laughs> Please stop that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to come out here and slag off Exeter, but all I will say, if you want an idea of what Exeter is like, do you remember the poster shop, Athena? <laughs> They've still got one. <laughs> I was walking down Exeter High Street recently, there was an Athena next to a C and A. Sorry, have I walked into a 90s version of Goodnight Sweetheart? <laughs> Exit was exciting, though, for me, because I grew up on Dartmoor. Nothing ever happened on Dartmoor. It's been in the news recently. It has. I don't know if you saw this. There was a Lynx on the loose. Yeah, yeah, it was exciting. That, I mean, no, none of that kind of excitement happened. There was no Lynx issues when I was growing up. The only Lynx issue was I was getting through three to four cans a week. <laughs> With little to no effect. <laughs> I was worried about the links got loose on Dartmoor because my parents still live there. I was worried. I texted my mum. I texted my mum to warn her. I was going to phone her, but I worried, what if she was hiding from the links at that moment? <laughs> Wouldn't want to be the one to give away her location. <laughs> What's my son? Fuck it, on my foot! No excitement like that when I was growing up. There, no, nothing had ever happened on Dartmoor. That's why they had to kind of make up these myths and legends. I don't know if you're aware of the myth of the hairy hand. But if you don't know the myth of the hairy hand, what it is, um, it's a, uh, a ghost hand that if you're driving across Dartmoor late at night will appear and steer you off the road. We learnt about this in history. Apparently this happened to loads of people. I was reading all the witness statements. My favourite person, one of the people it happened to, described the hand as invisible. <laughs> I mean, if he wasn't breathalyzed at the scene, what the fuck are Devon Cornwall police doing? <laughs> now, I don't want you to think I'm just going to come out here tonight and just talk about pointless shit all evening. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I'll deal with the issues. Let's do it. Um, no, I, I, can do, I can deal with the issues. I can deal with the big issues. It's fine. I, I, let's go. Um, I would give a life prison sentence. Oh, you're worried now, aren't you? <laughs> no, I would give a life prison sentence to anyone who works in pret a -Manger. And when I order an individual yoghurt, they fail to remind me to get a fucking spoon. Because <laughs> they know in half an hour I'll be sat in a train, head in my hands, thinking, why do bad things happen to good people? <laughs> thinking, can I fold my lid into a spoon? I don't have the origami skills, Hammersmith. <laughs> Because I think if you do a job, you should do the whole thing. I got in a taxi the other day, gave him my destination. He turned around and he said, have you got a preferred route? Surely that is your job. <laughs> I was get in and him go, are you right to do the gears? Because <laughs> I'm eating a Yorkie. I haven't got a hand free. <laughs> Look, what I'm trying to tell you about the yoghurt, right, I'll just cut a long story short. Right, I don't know if you ever bumped into someone you haven't seen in six months while you're on a train drinking a yoghurt. <laughs> it's a low moment. You know they're going to report to mutual friends. I bumped into Josh. How was he? Having a breakdown. <laughs> he was mixing the two sides of a fruit corner with his own tongue. <laughs> Has he got a girlfriend while well, he was getting off with a petty for Lou? Yeah. <laughs> There's no panic like it on a train. The only panic close on a train is when out of nowhere the announcement will come at the next station this train will be splitting in two. <laughs> the front four coaches will be going, I've never known if I'm in the front or the back four coaches. <laughs> There'll be rumours flying around the carriage. Stick your head out the window and count backwards, I can't get the angle. <laughs> One guy in headphones who hasn't heard, well, I'm not fucking telling him, unlucky, my friend. <laughs> 
Families being split up like it's East and West Berlin. <laughs> you two go on, I will go the other. Two of us will live on, the other two will end up in Little Hampton. <laughs> I do like the train, don't get me wrong. I love the train, it's my favourite way to travel. Not, not. All the time I had one bad experience, I hope I got a sleeper train. I don't know if any of you have done this. It's not, not a pleasurable experience. It should be called the lying awake for seven hours livid train. <laughs> the reason I got the sleeper train is my other option was to fly. I hate flying, it terrifies me. I don't know how people aren't scared of flying. How are you okay with turbulence? The first time I heard about that, I couldn't believe my ears. And what was that? Oh, sorry, did we not tell you? Sometimes when you're five miles in the air, the plane will go up and down uncontrollably, and there's nothing the pilot can do about it. <laughs> that is not an acceptable feature. <laughs> if you go on the bus and they went, just so you know, sometimes halfway down the motorway, we might just zigzag in and out of the lanes. There's nothing the driver can do about it. I mean, I will admit, I'm not an expert on aviation. I'm not. Someone asked me the other day, they said, what do you think about this debate? of whether Heathrow needs a third runway. My first reaction was, has Heathrow only got two runways? <laughs> Shoot, there's loads of them, it's a massive airport. That means they've got more WH Smiths than they've got runways. <laughs> I mean, it's not an airport, that's a news agent with excellent transport links. <laughs> I know, I know some people like flying. I know we all know as well why people like it because of the departure lounge, because it's socially acceptable. You can drink at any time. <laughs> and I said that. However, I tell you what's not socially acceptable. What I saw the other day in the departure lounge a man at 7 a.m. eating a wagamamas. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> that sort of thing. There was a guy having a Guinness going, well, fucking hell, he's got problems, hasn't he? <laughs> at least he's taking on some iron. <laughs> But I think people are too kind of laissez-faire, they're too laid back about flying. Like, I was at the airport about a year ago. All the flights were cancelled due to bad weather, right? Like, people were complaining. Why are you complaining? Surely far worse would be you turn up at the airport and your flight is the only one that isn't cancelled. <laughs> you turn up and go, EasyJet, flight E4597 is going to have a go for it. <laughs> at a slightly faster pace than usual. <laughs> and the shuttle bus will be taking off in five minutes. <laughs> you get on, the masks are already down. <laughs> Do you want to see my passport? You only need that where you're going, mate. <laughs> Do you have your dental records? <laughs> and they don't reassure you when you get on. They always do that announcement. Just so you know, we're about half an hour late taking off, but uh, don't worry, I'll try and make up a bit of time in the air. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I'm shitting myself enough as it is. Without the news, you're going to be speeding. <laughs> Might as well get on just you know, a couple of hours behind, but don't worry. I know a shortcut across North Korean airspace. <laughs> Tell you what, who fancies the loop the loop? Fuck it, you only live once, don't you? <laughs> Seen the Red Devils do it, how difficult can it be? <laughs> And the entertainment is not enough to distract you. The films, fine. The other options. Who are these people on planes watching these single episodes of serial dramas? <laughs> oh, series five, episode 16 of Dexter. <laughs> Brilliant. That's exactly where I've got to in my box set. <laughs> I'll just go, well, I've missed the first five series and 15 episodes. I'm sure I'll catch up. <laughs> Oh, this was the worst. I got on the other day. You will not believe this. One of the options, genuinely, series one, episode one of Lost. <laughs> the plane crash drama. <laughs> what are other options? The Buddy Holly story. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. It's still better than your other option, isn't it? Watching that computerized map of your journey. Who is that for? No, I'm not really into films. No, I think I'll just watch the sat-nav for the next six hours. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's got a dot where you're coming from. 
a dot where you're going and a picture of a plane and you turn it on and go, I knew that information. <laughs> I've never turned it on and gone, oh, fuck, I'm on the wrong plane. <laughs> well, I've got to check, so that could have been awkward, couldn't it? <laughs> also, why do I need to know how far I am on my route? I tell you when I get off, where the fucking land? <laughs> oh, look, I'm going over my house, I'll jump out here. Also, that plane, that's not to scale, is it? <laughs> it's absolutely massive. <laughs> I flew from London to Aberdeen the other day, turned it on, all I could see was plane. <laughs> if I walk down to the cockpit, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> There's always pointless statistics underneath. Outside temperature, minus 40 degrees, give a shit. I'm in here! <laughs> oh, thank God I checked. I was going to nip out for a fag. <laughs> well, I better put my parker on before I go wing walking, yeah? <laughs> and then they turn the entertainment off as you're coming into land. Why are you doing that? That's oh, half an hour from land. I'm going to turn the entertainment off. Why? Sorry, it's a video player. I refuse to accept that the technology interferes. Yeah, I'm afraid we're going to have to turn it off, because it turns out the pause button is also the one that brings the wheels up and down. <laughs> so what happened the other day, we're coming into land, someone pressed fast forward, we fucking took off again. <laughs> I mean, what else could it be? It's health and safety. I asked the player's hostess, I said, what is it? She says, health and safety. What? Sorry that we're going to crash land and I'm failed to get off because I'm enjoying Paddington too much. <laughs> so that's why I got the sleeper train. <laughs> Have any of you here ever got a sleeper train? I, I, I was worried about missing it because it's the last train out of Edinburgh. I got there an hour and a half early. I don't know if you ever tried killing an hour and a half at Edinburgh Waverley Station at around midnight. <laughs> there is very little to do. I think I am the person in the world who has come the closest to a station to paying 20p to weigh myself on those scales. <laughs> who is using them? I mean, occasionally I pay 20p to go to the toilet if I'm desperate. I've never been that desperate to know my own weight. <laughs> I mean, maybe if I'd paid for the toilet, I wanted to check I've got my money's worth. <laughs> and they've always got the absolutely massive dial, haven't they? I mean, you've got to be confident that is going to be good news. <laughs> Otherwise, there's going to be someone on the opposite platform going, fucking hell, the fat controller's back in town. <laughs> it's like the countdown clock. I don't want to find out like that. Do -do 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 fat, I don't want to know. <laughs> What's it for? The harshest Weight Watchers meeting of all time. Went to the next meeting, King's Cross and Pancras of Rush Hour, actually, so... See if you eat a pepperoni this week, you fat bastard. <laughs> I made the mistake, I didn't go with these scales. What I did, I upgraded, I paid 50p to um, kill some time on the massage chair. <laughs> Don't know if you've used one of these, it's... Um, I thought it would have not just killed time, but relaxed me. I put in my 50p, sat down, it started. That's when I realised it's actually not that relaxing <laughs> to be sexually assaulted by a chair in a public therapy. <laughs> it's pretty racy. At one point, I thought he was going to ask for 50p for a happy finish. <laughs> and it's going right, and you sat there, and you think, I could look more sinister if I tried. <laughs> look at the grin on your face. And then I looked up, realised they had placed this chair opposite the exit to the women's toilets. <laughs> I mean, never have I looked more sinister in my life. <laughs> One point of the vibrations, I felt they were moving forwards. <laughs> Thought if I end up in the women's toilets, I am not going to be able to explain this to the police. <laughs> well, I did kill an hour and a half, but it was in custody. <laughs> so I, I got the sleeper train. Do not, if you get a sleeper train, travel alone. That was the mistake. Because what happens was, this was the most absurd question I've been asked all year. What happened was, I went to buy the ticket. He said, it'll be this much. 
And then this was the question he asked. He said, it would be this much. Or would you like to save 20 pounds and share a compartment with a stranger? <laughs> no. I would pay my life savings to avoid such a fate. Because <laughs> the best case scenario there is I'm asleep when he kills me. <laughs> and you might say no one's ever murdered on a train. Have you seen Poirot? It's happening all the fucking time. <laughs> I mean, that is not an acceptable offer. I've never had that in a hotel. <laughs> I've never got to the reception of a hotel. There's your room, but... um. I can knock off 20 quid if you want to jump in with Lenny Henry. <laughs> I think I'll leave it if it's all the same with you. One of the options, he said, one of the things, he said, it's got lockable doors. That is of no use if he's already in there with me. <laughs> all I've got now is a cellmate. <laughs> I've had some bad sleeps recently. I, had, I slept on a single bed for the first time in ages recently. Have you tried this as an adult? Were they always that thin? Sleeping on a bed, it's more like balancing on a fucking log. <laughs> Felt like I was working on my core strength, just staying on. <laughs> You've been working out now, sleeping on a single bed, I'm fucking ripped, mate. <laughs> it's like eight hours of Pilates every night. <laughs> Is that why people are so muscly when they get out of prison? <laughs> they said, well, we can push it next to the wall, will that help? I said, no. Because then the best case scenario is I roll over and hit a wall. <laughs> well, you slept in. Well, at 8am, I turned over and knocked myself out. <laughs> also, they don't need to make the duvet smaller as well. It's the size of a fucking flannel. <laughs> Were you warm? My knee was. <laughs> Felt like I was in Sylvanian families. <laughs> I was just used to preserve my modesty like Adam and Eve. <laughs> So we've all had bad sleeps, I know. We've all, you've all had the one where you're tricked. We go to a friend's house, they have another couple of drinks. We've got a spare bed, one in the morning. We'll just go and fetch you the air bed. What? <laughs> you're on an air bed, aren't you? No. Because this isn't the outback. <laughs> well, I'm not sleeping on an air bed because I'm not George Michael at Club Tropicana. <laughs> they bring it down, you stood there for two hours. You're right, no, I'm waking up. <laughs> you're not Michael Flatley in training. <laughs> I've never got the guts to pump it up to the top, so in the end, I'm lying hard on the floor while two bits of airbed sandwich around me <laughs> like I'm the sausage in a hot dog. <laughs> oh, my God, have you done the couple on an airbed? Fucking hell, that's a tense night, isn't it? <laughs> Get the point of balance. Do not move a fucking muscle. <laughs> One of you breathes out, you're both rolling to the middle. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you the other one I hate. Go to a hotel. You ask for a double bed. They've clearly pushed two singles together. You can feel the crack of doom. You're just lying there on the edge of your bed going, please don't let me roll into the crack in the middle of the night and be swallowed by my own bed. <laughs> Lenny Henry lying there. Where the fuck did he go? <laughs> He's here. I'm not paying full price. He was here. <laughs> I've got a um, double bed. I have it. It might be queen size, might be king size. No one knows, do they? Now, all you know is your bed is one bigger than the sheet you just bought. <laughs> You'll try and fit it on, though, won't you? I can do this! Till after about an hour when you go, well, I don't need a sheet on all four corners of my bed, do I? <laughs> I'll just go for three and then the world's most powerful catapult. <laughs> Four in the morning, thrust into the wall at 80 miles an hour. <laughs> what bed have you got, Dan? Double Just a double bed. What, what did you have when you were a kid as a bed? Single bed. Single bed. Just classic single. <laughs> no bells or whistles. I'd have killed for that, mate. Do you know what I had? I, I'll tell you. Because otherwise it'd be an awful question to ask you. <laughs> I had a thing called a cabin bed. Don't know what a cabin bed is, Dan, I'll explain it to you. What it was, it was the height of a bunk bed, but below it, instead of another bed, I had a desk. <laughs> yeah, basically, my parents had made the executive decision that I was more likely to write a letter than have a friend.
people to come, come around. Can I stay over? No, but you can catch up on your admin. <laughs> what seven-year-old needs quick access to a desk in the middle of the night? <laughs> Wake up at three in the morning. I need to pen my memoirs. <laughs> I'll just climb down the most painful ladder in the world. <laughs> oh, my God, the pain of that bunk bed ladder. There was nothing like it, was there? Do you want to go to bed? No, I prefer to keep my feet. <laughs> it's like a biblical punishment. You shouldn't have to put your shoes on to go to bed. <laughs> Sometimes the phones will come up, I'd just be asleep on the desk. <laughs> He's working late, isn't he? <laughs> Those memoirs aren't going to pen themselves. <laughs> I, I, I did have a cabin bed. I tell you how my mum tried to convince me that it was a good thing to have a cabin bed. This is what she said. She said, um, well, actually, Josh, you should be really pleased you've got a cabin bed because, actually, it's a very grown-up bed. <laughs> now, I'm a grown-up now. That is not the case, is it? <laughs> I don't know if there's any single women here, but if you went back to a guy's house... <laughs> Things were going pretty well. <laughs> and he went, do you want to uh, come through to my bedroom? Put your shoes back on. <laughs> Got myself a mover and a shaker here, haven't I? He works hard and he plays hard. <laughs> I wasn't a cool child, I'll admit that. I, I, I tell you what, Phoebe, I'll, I'll test who's the cooler teenager, me or you. It's very simple. Um, I'm just going to ask you a yes no question. Are you okay with that? OK, here's the question, Phoebe, very simple. This is to judge who was the cooler kid, me or you. When you were ten, did you have your own Filofax? <laughs> I bet you don't even know what Filofax is, do you? Imagine the calendar section of your iPhone in a ring binder. If you haven't got an iPhone, I, I, I've got an iPhone. It's, it's not, not actually the worst phone. I, it annoys me. It's not the worst phone I've got. That I've got a landline, right? And um, my, my girlfriend bought us a phone for our landline. She went out and she bought one of those retro tourney phones. <laughs> Have you tried making a call on one of these? You phone someone with a nine in their number, it's quicker walking to their fucking house. <laughs> I mean, if we get burgled, you go, nine, nine, nine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're allowed to put a burglary. When did it happen? Six months ago, <laughs> when I started making this call. <laughs> what have they taken? Everything except my shit phone. <laughs> she bought it at a charity shop. A charity shop. Think about how a phone ends up in a charity shop. Think about it. We own a dead man's phone. <laughs> Do you know the last number down on our phone? Nine, nine. That is the last number down on our phone. <laughs> Sorry, Phoebe, I digress. <laughs> Question is, simple yes or no, did you have a file of facts when you were 10? No. no. <laughs> you win, Phoebe, I'll admit it, I had a file of facts. <laughs> I want you to believe me at this point, Phoebe, so I brought it with me um, as proof. This is, here it is, this is my fun facts, there it is. <laughs> Got a better reception than I did at the top. I, there it is, I mean, I don't know why I had this, I don't know how I thought this was going to help me in my day-to-day -day life. How I imagined my day would go, wake up, put my shoes on, go down my ladder. <laughs> Check my file of facts, have I got any meetings? No. <laughs> because I'm ten. <laughs> In fact, I've got a lot fewer social engagements since I started walking around the playground with my own file of facts. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll just put my fun facts away and read my broadsheet newspaper, the Fun Day Times. <laughs> Clearly, if you put the word fun in front of anything when I was a kid, I'd have fucking loved it. <laughs> I've got a fungal nail infection. Brilliant! <laughs> I, got the, I got my dad to send me this. It's a weird old thing, actually. I, the, you've, you've got the diary here, all the, all the dates for your diary, so you've got, like... And they've, they've marked in important dates for you to learn. So July, here we've got... So uh, July the 4th, Declaration of Independence. July the 20th, Neil Armstrong becomes the first man on the moon. I would question how few important dates they could find for September. Just one date for your diary. September the 1st, Gloria Estefan's birthday. <laughs> 
was that a bigger cultural event than I remember? <laughs> Can we go out tonight, Josh? No, I'm afraid it's Gloria Estefan's birthday. <laughs> Have our annual family meal. <laughs> it's Estefan, must at my house, oh yeah. What about tomorrow? No, I'm afraid it's Cindy Lauper's baptism. It's quite the week. <laughs> this is my favourite section, amazing fun facts. Yeah, you can learn things. For instance, the first one is um, cats use whiskers to judge whether they can fit through gaps. I would question this because I've never actually seen it in action. I've never seen a cat. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave it if it's all the same with you. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I've never seen a cat with his head in railings going, oh, fucking hell, those whiskers didn't work, did they? <laughs> This is the weird bit, though, the fun facts, right? Because it, it gets slightly sexist. Like, Jane Austen here, she's described not as an author, but as an authoress. <laughs> so they can go, yeah, she's an author, but she's a fucking woman. <laughs> and, you, know, you know, as if the word Jane hadn't given it away in the first place. <laughs> and you might say I'm jumping to conclusions. I'm just going to read you one fact from the amazing fun facts, and you can judge for yourself whether you think they were promoting a sexist message to children. In fact, just to check, I'm not lying. What's your name, sir? Uh, Mike. Mike, if you just stand up and just read this. You don't need to read out loud, don't worry, Mike. Can you read? Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, good, because at, at Port Talbot we had a fucking nightmare. Now, um... <laughs> Mike, just look at this. Just read that. That, that fact there. Yeah, so when I read that out, just you can confirm with a nod that that is true. Yeah, so I'm just going to read you this fact, and you can judge for yourselves whether you think the fun facts is promoting a sexist message. Here it is. The fact is, the word bride comes from an old German word meaning to cook. <laughs> and the title they've given that fact is, she knows what's expected of her. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what shit the guy that was writing the fun facts was going through at the time. <laughs> Have you got any more facts, Steve? Yeah, one in three women are cheating bitches. <laughs> They'll rip out your heart as soon as look at you. Steve, you've got to move on. The relationship's over. Gloria Estefan has left you, mate. <laughs> you've got a children's file of facts to write, man. <laughs> I shouldn't really make jokes about breakups, we all know. Going through a breakup is the hardest thing in the world, isn't it? Actually, second hardest thing in the world. We all know the hardest thing in the world, and that is picking a CD up off a laminate floor. <laughs> Tough, isn't it? Drop a CD, well, that's four hours of my life gone. <laughs> Chasing it around like it's air hockey. I'm never going to get my fingernails under it. If we sell the house, I'm going to have to make it a feature. <laughs> Come in, we've got a microwave, a fridge, freezer. That's Urban Hymns by The Verve. <laughs> How am I going to pick up a plunger? I don't own a plunger. I'm not going to call out a plumber. <laughs> You're right, mate. What's the job? Pick that up, will you? Why do you recognise me? I flooded my landing just two weeks ago. <laughs> the reason I've got this, the reason I've got this, I want to prove to you that that is what my childhood was like growing up in Devon in the 90s, because the last bit I'm going to talk about that, and it sounds absurd when I talk about what it was like growing up in Dartmoor just like 20 years ago. Yeah, all of this is true. I, I had a fun fact. That was a cool thing in those days. Like, uh, to give you an idea, how, how many kids have you got in your year at school, Phoebe? A hundred. Do you know how many kids I had in my year at primary school? Four. <laughs> there was a five-a-side football tournament we couldn't enter. <laughs> we genuinely had one thing in our playground, a tyre. Like a monkey enclosure. <laughs> Not even on a rope, just lying there. <laughs> As if there'd been a car crash that had bounced over, they'd gone, fuck it, they'll enjoy it. <laughs> we genuinely, no word of a lie, had a lesson once a week where we listened to the radio. <laughs> like evacuees waiting for news from the front. <laughs> I don't know what the show was, I don't remember. I imagine it was educational. It wasn't just the teacher going, oh, sod this, I'm off for a fag. <laughs> hey, Steve Wright, enjoy yourself, losers. <laughs> Let's have these factoids come up in the exam. <laughs> so I question these things growing up, whether they were real. Like harvest festivals, you have that once a year. At the time of the harvest, we'd bring in tins of food that we give to the local old people. Basically, we'd celebrate the harvest by giving old people food that was going to last longer than they did. <laughs> Here you go, enjoy that if I was you, quickly. 
Always things that had nothing to do with the harvest. Who has ever harvested spam? <laughs> what do we think was growing in fields? That, that, that field, that's angel delight. <laughs> and that one is cheese strings. Pick your own. <laughs> we'd look forward to anything. We'd look forward to it. Mufti Day. Non uniform day. We loved that because, oh, we loved it because we were excited. But why were we excited? How exciting is wearing your own clothes? <laughs> Never sat home going, fucking brilliant time. What am I up to? Wearing my own clothes. <laughs> hey, Steve, do you want to come round and wear your own clothes? <laughs> it's a weird question, isn't it? But we loved it because we knew someone was going to forget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He'd take his tie off. You are fooling no one, my friend. <laughs> My teacher always used to go, it's like a fashion show, isn't it? No, it's not. It's far more brutal. Because never at a fashion show is David Gandhi chased around while everyone else attempts to rip off his Adidas popper trousers. <laughs> I would say if you're wearing quick-release trousers to a mufty day, you are your own worst enemy. <laughs> if you make it to registration and you're not in your pants, consider that a victory. <laughs> the biggest mistake I ever made, I'll admit this, I wore swimming shorts, I thought they were normal shorts. People said, well, why have they got the netting pants inside? <laughs> I don't even know why they've got the netting pants in swimming shorts. You don't need them. If you didn't have them, it wouldn't be an issue. You wouldn't get to the swim and go, sorry, I can't go in, because I've forgotten my netting pants. <laughs> We've got a bag of tangerines I could make do and mend. <laughs> I'm going into the sea. I know what happens when you take netting into the sea. I don't want to do that. I'm swimming, not dredging for mackerel. <laughs> I was a swim putting this way, fire up the barbecue. <laughs> and dinner will be served. <laughs> we didn't even learn anything good. Art class, I wanted to learn to draw. The only tip I remember learning from art class, when drawing a face, always remember the eyes are exactly halfway down. No, they're not. <laughs> Have you seen her face? <laughs> well, yeah, of course my eyes are halfway down. That's why I wear my glasses under my ears. <laughs> What do you look like? Normal bloke, 50% forehead. <laughs> the only way that tip is of any use is if the question in the exam is draw Ant from Anton Deck. <laughs> science, the only thing I learned in science was how to use a Bunsen burner. Not a skill I've needed in later life. <laughs> Never does someone come around, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'll just pop on the Bunsen burner. <laughs> Blue flame, I'm not a fucking idiot. <laughs> only one use for orange flame, wasn't there? <laughs> oh, that just happened. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. <laughs> Never see one as an arrow. Never outside a pub. Have you got a light? Yeah, have you got a gas tap? <laughs> also, what is going on with health and safety in schools? I'm not allowed a conquer in the playground, but I am allowed a flamethrower in the classroom. <laughs> the only other piece of equipment we ever used in science was once a week, we'd be dispatched to the car park with a wheel on a stick. A trundle wheel. We just walk around for hours, just clicking. I don't know what I'm learning here. Is this going to come up in the exam? Question one, explain photosynthesis. Question two, how big's the car park? <laughs> to the nearest ten clicks. That's why the best day in science, the best day in all of school, was when they go, and today we're going to watch the television. Fucking brilliant, like at home. No, not like at home, because this TV show will be shit. But then they build up the excitement, the teacher, by leaving the room and then slowly wheeling the TV back in <laughs> like it was the fucking Queen. <laughs> All hail the television! <laughs> and then they'd fail to make it work for 20 minutes <laughs> and wheel it back out <laughs> and bring out the trundle wheels. <laughs> That's how it worked, Phoebe. You've got to... Believe me on that. Like, I, 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 before I go, before I go, I should admit that I, I have told one lie. I have told one lie about growing up. I should admit that before I go. I should admit this is not my fun facts. I will admit that. Right? I, I, I did have a fun facts, but I phoned my dad. I said, have you got my fun facts? He said, no. We didn't think you'd want it. We threw it away. I said, I wish you'd done that 20 years ago, mate. <laughs> right, I had to go on Amazon Marketplace to get this. They are now a collector's item. I had to pay 40 quid for this. <laughs> I am now the only person in the UK who has bought a fun fax and claimed it as a business expense. <laughs> Problem is, once you get it, you start getting the Amazon recommends emails, don't you? 
Before you know it, you get addicted to the fucking inserts. Look at that. <laughs> Friendship bracelets, face painting, calculator fun. Not one mention of the word boobs. <laughs> However, there is a bit where it says right in the numbers, 37818. Turn your calculator upside down. What have you got? The word Bible. That is not calculator fun. <laughs> hey, guys, a bit of fun. The word of our Lord. Get involved. <laughs> a beginner's guide to first aid. I'm sorry. But if I broke my leg and a kid showed up and got this out, I would fucking shit myself. <laughs> I suppose it could only really end with something from the Fun Facts' book of jokes, jokes and more jokes. <laughs> Seems appropriate. Tell you what, I'll pick a random page. Dan, you can pick the joke number. Page 42, that is. That's utterly hilarious jokes. <laughs> jokes about cows. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a practice joke just so you can get a taste for them. What do you call a sleeping cow? A bulldozer. <laughs> right, a few of you enjoyed it. The rest of you, you're going to need to fucking get on board. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Dan, a joke from one to five? Three. Three. To finish the show. <laughs> and the DVD, Dan. <laughs> An utterly hilarious joke from the Fun Facts' book of jokes, jokes, and more jokes. One, two, three. Right. What do you call a cow with no feelings? My ex wife. <laughs> Way to ruin the DVD, Dan. <laughs> uh, you've been absolutely lovely. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good night. Well, if you insist. <laughs> uh, you've been an absolutely lovely audience. Can we have one more rest of round of applause for Dan? <laughs> and Phoebe! <laughs> uh, I've, I've got a few loose ends to tie up uh, before I go. I want to fill you in with. Um, number one, um, I should say, it's been the elephant in the room, I should deal with this. Um, I know that this year GQ produced their list of the 10 best and worst dressed men in Britain. <laughs> Was I on the best dressed list? Of course I thought, no, all right. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was the second worst dressed man in Britain. <laughs> according to GQ magazine. <laughs> Picture of me in a flat cap. I was going to the fucking gym, okay? <laughs> They described my style, genuinely, word for word, as an update on Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> He's not even a historical figure. How <laughs> could it be an update? I was looking, like, they was judged by proper people. One of the judges was Giorgio Armani. I didn't even know that was a real person. <laughs> I thought it was made up, like Georgia Asda. Number one, any guesses? Paul Hollywood. <laughs> Paul Hollywood. I met him a few months ago, very nice man, and he, he came up to me and he said, oh, really, really unfair, isn't it? Us two being voted the two worst dressed men in Britain. And I thought, well, me, yeah. <laughs> Have a look at yourself, mate. You're a state. You've got boot-cut jeans and your cuffs overturned. <laughs> also, while you're here, how much water do I need to put on a naan bread? Oh, yeah, it's amazing to play Hammersmith Apollo. It's a genuine honour. Um, it's, it's obviously a very historic venue. Um, lots of hugely historic gigs happened here. Um, David Bowie played here in 1973 when it's called Hammersmith Odeon. Um, and um, he, uh, I'm a huge fan of David Bowie. He retired the character of Ziggy Stardust live on stage. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of David Bowie. Um, not just the music, everything. Um, one of my favorite things, I don't know if you've seen it, is the opening monologue he does on the snowman. I don't know if you've seen this. A few of you have at the front. Right, what it is, it's live action and he's playing a grown-up version of the child from the snowman. What happens is he comes up into his loft and he finds a scarf and he turns to the camera and he goes, oh, this scarf reminds me actually of when I was a child and I built a snowman and it came to life and flew me to the North Pole. I was watching this and I was thinking, look, David, I know you've lived an interesting life. <laughs> but if that had happened to me, I wouldn't need a fucking scarf to remind me. <laughs> I think that would be one of my go-to anecdotes in any situation. <laughs> How was your childhood? Oh, you're not going to believe what happened to me. GQ, not, not the worst article of the year. I, I should also draw attention to this. I don't know if you know this. I was accused in the press of being a liar. I'm not bitter about it, but I have printed out and brought it here. Now, um, <laughs> I don't know if anyone reads the Extra Express and Echo. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> here it is. You can see that. There's the article. You can see my picture on it. I'm just going to read you the headline. You can judge for yourselves who the bad guy is. This was March in the Extra Express and Echo, page five. This was the headline. Outrage, outrage. As BBC comedian claims Exeter has an Athena. <laughs> Speaking on Mock the Week last night, if it was on Mock the Week, it's probably a joke. <laughs> They've also printed angry tweets. I don't know who Vicky Cross is, but she's written, there was no warning before the show that they'd be taking Exeter down. <laughs> Because that's not how TV works. <laughs> this is the worst bit, though. The final line of the article. However, the extra branch of Athena actually shut down in 2015. <laughs> I mean, they're still stuck with it longer than most, didn't they? That must have been awkward when they broke the news. We've got bad news, guys. What's happened? Yeah, we stopped Athena 20 years ago. Oh, oh, shit, we'll have to go and get jobs in Woolworths. Yeah, about that. <laughs> My mum sent me this article. She was very proud. And then she, I said, have you got any more weird things about Devon um, that I haven't put in the show? She'd seen the show. She said, uh, she sent me three more facts about growing up in Devon. And um, I'll read them for you to finish the show. Number one, our village had one bus stop. And the bus came once a week. <laughs> what use is that? I'll just go nip into town, I'll be back in seven days. <laughs> I thought my brother had run away from home, he just popped out to get some Lego. <laughs> the local pub did their first vegetarian option in 1999. <laughs> it consisted of baked beans covered in smash. <laughs> that is not a vegetarian option. <laughs> that is what you eat after you've been dumped. This is the worst one, though. When they replaced the old red phone box by the cattle grid <laughs> with a new silver one, someone blew it up in disgust. <laughs> and the police closed the road for fear it was the IRA. <laughs> I've got one more thing I want to show you before I go. Give me one sec. It's annoying that doesn't work, actually, because I had a documentary on um, how to climb the ladder at Sainsbury's. <laughs> I mean, it, it always gets a clap and a laugh, but you have to question, was it worth bringing it on tour for 50 nights? <laughs> Tickets as I was travelling by train, it was unbelievable. <laughs> to put it on the seat next to me, Jeremy Corbyn was fucking livid. <laughs> See, wait 90 minutes, you'll finally get one satirical joke. That's what it is. <laughs> Tell you what, Phoebe, I'll blow your mind one more time. You're not going to fucking believe this. 
Whoa, look at the depth of that. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, do you know what's in there? Me neither, but we don't need it anymore, do we? <laughs> it's the thing about old TVs, wasn't it? The screen was smaller, but they were closer. <laughs> we brought this out in Exeter. We got three bids on it. <laughs> well, that's me and the local papers for the rest of the fucking month, isn't it? <laughs> Um, you have been absolutely lovely. Can I just thank you all for coming? Cause, uh, it genuinely means the world to me. Thank you so much for listening. It was a joy to play for you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good night. Call me the fun junkie. Everything I know is fun.